Hello and welcome back to Neo Psychology with me, your teacher, Mr. Neo, the channel where I teach online psychology lessons for my wonderful students. Today we're carrying on with the attachment unit and we're looking at lesson two, Schaefer's stages of attachment. Let's get started. So, lesson two, Schaefer stages of attachment. Consider this, babies don't instantly form attachment to their parents. At what age do children start to form attachments to their parents? And how can you tell a baby has formed an attachment? A baby, an infant, obviously can't tell you they've formed an attachment. All right, mate, I really like hanging out with you. It doesn't really work like that. So how can we tell they form an attachment? And at what age? And that's what Schaefer tried to find. So Rudolf Schaefer and Peggy Emerson in 1964 aimed to investigate the formation of early attachments in particular the age at which they developed their emotional intensity and to whom they were directed. At what age do babies form attachments? How strong are these attachments and who do they form attachments with? Let's have a look. We've got three learning objectives today. We are going to look at to show comprehension and apply knowledge of Schaefer and Emerson's 1964 research. Then we're going to analyze Schaefer's stages of attachment, which he based off this research. And then we're going to be able to do lesson objective three, discuss and evaluate Schaefer's stages of attachment. Let's start with a learning objective one. Let's have a look at Schaefer and Emerson's 1964 research. The study involved 60 babies, 31 male, 29 female, all were from Glasgow and the majority were from skilled working class families. Yeah, they're from Glasgow. The babies and their mothers were visited at home every month for their first year and again at 18 months. The researchers asked the mothers questions about the kind of protest their baby showed in seven everyday separations. For example, when the adult would leave the room, that would be a measure of separation anxiety. This was designed to measure the infant's attachment. The stranger also assessed stranger anxiety, the infant's anxiety response to unfamiliar adults. So there are two forms of anxiety that we're gonna look at today, okay? And this is a way that psychologists determine a baby has formed an attachment. If the parent leaves the room and they show that they're upset, this is called separation anxiety. That means that they obviously have some form of attachment with that parent, with that caregiver, and when they've left the room, they haven't liked it. And then the other is stranger anxiety. If an unfamiliar person walks into the room and they don't like that person and they show anxiety, that shows that they are clearly know comfortable with the people that they are familiar with and that again is a form of showing attachment so we've got two definitions here get these definitions down please stranger anxiety and separation anxiety give yourself a couple minutes use the key terminology give that a go right let's go through these definitions do it with me say it out loud separation anxiety is the what shown the Distress, well done, shown by an infant when separated from his or her caregiver. Good, okay? This is not necessarily the child's biological. Yes, biological mother, well done. Stranger anxiety, though, is the distress shown by an infant when approached or picked up by someone who is... Say it out loud. Unfamiliar, good, well done. Right. So separation anxiety, let's get that key terminology down. The distress shown by an infant when separated from his or her caregiver, this is not necessarily the child's biological mother. And then stranger anxiety, this is the distress shown by an infant when approached or picked up by someone who is unfamiliar. So, it is through separation and stranger anxiety how Schaefer and Emerson operationalize or measure attachment with infants in their study. Okay, what do you think the results will find? 
at how many weeks old do you think most infants will have formed an attachment? Okay, because attachments aren't formed instantly. When you're a, when you're a newborn, you don't you don't show stranger or separation anxiety. You don't even know who your mum and dad are. You don't even know who you are. You ain't got anything going on, right? So at some point, you do form the attachment, right? At how old do you form that attachment? And who do the infants form the specific attachments with? And why do the infants form these specific attachments? Think back to lesson one, reciprocity and interactional synchrony. Right, here we go. This is what the research found, right? Have a look at the data there. Between 25 and 32 weeks, so around seven months of age, about 50% of the babies showed signs of separation anxiety towards a particular adult, indicating a specific attachment, okay? Some were a little bit younger, some were a little bit older, but the majority, they showed signs of separation anxiety around seven months old, okay? Some a little bit earlier, some a little bit later, but that is generally considered the time when babies or the majority of babies or infants start to form attachments. In most cases, this specific attachment was formed with the mother, okay? So you can see there, the majority of the time, this attachment was with the mother. Attachment tended to be given to the caregiver who was most interactive and sensitive to infant signals and face, facial expressions. And I think that's sort of showing that reciprocity, okay? The child, the, the infant would do some sort of expression, the mother might respond to it, and then the baby might respond to that with a smile, and they've got this, this two-way process, okay? This was not necessarily the person with whom the infant spent most time. It's the one that was the most interactive with the child. So it's not good enough just to have the baby sat next to you whilst you're on your phone or on the PlayStation or whatever. You need to be actually interacting with the child to form an attachment, believe it or not. By the age of 40 weeks, 80% of the babies had a specific attachment and almost 30% displayed multiple attachments. So multiple attachments are attachments formed to two or more people. Most infants develop multiple attachments once they have formed one true attachment to a main caregiver. So what Schaefer and Emerson found was they formed one attachment first, this primary attachment figure, and then later on did they form multiple attachments. So here's three questions. Give these a go, please. Five minutes. Number one, in Schaefer and Emerson's research, which two behaviours were assessed in infants to determine whether an attachment was formed with the caregiver? Two, at what age did Schaefer and Emerson find the majority of infants started to show signs of a specific attachment? And an extension, why do you think in most cases the specific attachment the infants formed was with their mother? Why do you think so? Right, write your answers down, give that a go, and I'll go through the answers now. Okay. In Schaefer and Emerson's research, which two behaviours were assessed in infants to determine whether an attachment was formed with the caregiver? Separation and stranger anxiety. And then two, at what age did Schaefer and Emerson find the majority of infants started to show signs of a specific attachment? It was around seven months old, 25 to 32 weeks of age. About 50% of the infants showed signs of a specific attachment. Now, why? Why do you think this was with the mother? There is no one specific right answer, but, you know, this is what I, this is what I determined. I, I thought that in the 1960s, the mother was seen as the primary nurturing caregiver and potentially still in society today, whilst it was the father's role to go to work, right? These norms are changing slightly, but generally they haven't really changed that much. Infants form attachments to those who respond to their signals reciprocity and mirror their actions and emotions interactional synchrony therefore it was likely to be the mother with whom the infants formed a specific attachment okay so what we learned last lesson in caregiver infant interactions lesson one babies form attachments through those interactions okay reciprocity and interactional synchrony it's likely that the mother in this in this example would be the one that spent the most time with the child and therefore would form that relationship, which is why Schaefer and Emerson found the majority of the time, the primary attachment figure in the majority of babies was with the mother, where, whereas it was seen as the father's role to go to work, right? I guess things are changing ever so slightly. 
there we go. Right, I've got some research methods questions for you to give a go as well, all right? Observations. Schaefer and Emerson use the mix of self-report and observation in their study. There are two types of self-report. One, interviews, and two, questionnaires. Good, right? So there are two forms of self-report, questionnaires and interviews. And Schaefer and Emerson use their mix of questionnaires, interviews, and observation in their study. The observations took place in infants' own homes. Observers noted down how the infants responded to their presence, so stranger anxiety, and how they reacted when the parent would leave the room, separation anxiety. In what way is this study a naturalistic observation? In what way could this study be described as an overt observation? And data on separation anxiety was collected from mothers themselves. In what way may this have challenged the validity of the data collected? Right, pause the video, give yourself five minutes, answer those research methods questions now, please. Otherwise, let's go through the answers. In what way is this study a naturalistic observation? Right, a naturalistic observation is one carried out in the participant's own environment as opposed to a controlled environment like a psychologist's lab. In a naturalistic observation, participants go about their day-to-day -day business as they were not being observed. Schaefer and Emerson's study could be described as a naturalistic observation because all the observations of babies and their carers took place in the family homes. Nothing was altered to observe the effect on the baby's behavior. Okay, essentially, it occurred in the natural setting where the behavior usually happens. If I wanted to observe the relationship between teachers and students in your school, if I was to carry out that research in a controlled environment in a lab, say for example, I might not get very valid, genuine behavior. People might change their behavior because it's not in the usual setting where it takes place. Whereas if I do it in a naturalistic observation where I study the behavior where it usually occurs, let's say in the classroom or in your school, therefore you're likely to get normal, genuine, valid data where there'll be very few demand characteristics, people changing their behavior to fit what they think the observer wants. Question two, in what way could this study be described as an overt observation? Right, we've got overt and covert, what do they mean? An overt observation is one in which participants are aware they are being observed, as opposed to a covert observation in which they are observed without their knowledge. Schaefer and Emerson's study could be described as an overt observation because the families were doing most of the observation themselves, so clearly they knew it was happening. Okay, so it was an overt, right? They knew it was happening, right? They would, they, you would have had to sign up for the experiment. Knock, knock, knock. Hi there, I'm Schaefer and Emerson. I'm here to observe your behavior. I understand you signed up for this, uh, you signed up for this observation. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, sure, come in. And they'll be there taking notes, right? It was over. It wasn't covert. They knew they were being observed. Finally, data on separation anxiety was collected from the mothers themselves. So they would ask them questions themselves. In what way may this have challenged the validity of the data collected? The validity of the observations could be challenged because it depends on the mothers being honest and not biased by the social acceptability of their answers and being able to be objective about what happened during separations. OK, so you have to rely on them being honest. You know, if, if I was a parent, for example, and someone came in and they were like, oh, what's it like when you left the room? I'm like, oh, the kid, the kid was crying constantly. They weren't, they weren't able to survive without me. They, they clearly fought, formed a really good attachment with me. I could lie because there's social desirability bias there. Okay. So there are issues with validity, the genuineness of the behavior. And that was Schaefer and Emerson. Okay. Identify one thing you learned about Schaefer and Emerson. Why do you think learning about this research is important? How does it apply in real life? Who is this information useful to? And do you have any other questions? Right, that's learning objective one done. Show comprehension and apply knowledge of Schaefer and Emerson's research. Are you happy for me to tick that off? Huzzah, let's do that one. We're moving on to lesson objective two, identify and analyze Schaefer's stages of attachment. 
Schaefer's Stages of Attachment. Based on the research Schaefer and Emerson gathered on developing attachments, they propose that attachment develops in four stages. Complete the table stage by stage. If you've got the booklet that I have, you can complete this booklet as we go along. So we, find, we can see that there are four stages. According to Schaefer and Emerson, there are four stages of attachment that occur at different times. Stage one, a social stage between birth and two months. Two, indiscriminate attachment stage between two to seven months. Three, specific attachment stage, seven to 12 months. And four, multiple attachment stage from one year onwards. Now, bear in mind that the names and ages of these stages may differ slightly from those in the textbook, but do not worry because it's all correct regardless of what you put. Let's have a look at stage one. Stage one is the asocial stage from birth to two months old. From birth until about two months, infants produce similar responses to all objects, whether they are animate or inanimate, okay? So they don't really show a preference towards, say, humans, for example. A baby can just sit there laughing its head off at a chair, for example. During this period of time, reciprocity and interactional synchrony play a role in establishing the infant's relationship with others. Okay, This is the asocial stage, meaning not social, the opposite of social, asocial, meaning someone who's social obviously likes to be around lots of people, whereas Babies, they don't really show at this stage, from birth to two months, any particular preference to animate or inanimate objects. Stage two is the indiscriminate attachment stage, from two to seven months old. From two to seven months, uh, show a preference for people rather than inanimate objects and recognize and prefer familiar adults. However, there is still no strong preference for who looks after them. No signs of stranger or separation anxiety. Their attachment behavior is therefore said to be indiscriminate because it's not different towards any one person. According to the Schaefer stages of attachment at between two and seven months old, they do start showing, they do start to know familiar adults, but they don't show a particular strong attachment or strong preference for them. And they don't generally show stranger or separation anxiety. So, According to this, they haven't really formed an attachment yet. However, in stage three, the specific attachment from seven to 12 months, at around seven months, the majority of babies start to display anxiety towards strangers and to become anxious when separated from one particular adult, separation anxiety, uh, usually the biological mother in 65% of cases. Okay, this is when Schaefer and Emerson found that babies start to show that they have formed an attachment. At this point, the baby is said to have formed a specific attachment and this adult is termed the primary attachment figure. This person is not necessarily the person uh, the child spends most time with, but the one who offers the most interaction and responds to the baby's signals with the most skill. So we're looking at reciprocity and interactional signals. By stage four, from one year onwards, we start to find multiple attachments. Shortly after babies start to show attachment behavior towards one adult, they usually extend this attachment behavior to multiple attachments with other adults with whom they regularly spend time. These relationships are called secondary attachments. In Schaefer and Emerson's study, 29% of the children had secondary attachments within a month of forming a primary or specific attachment. By the age of about one year, the majority of infants had developed multiple attachments. This could be to the father, it could be to a brother or sister or auntie, uncle, grandmother, grandfather. Right, complete this table stage by stage. So the asocial stage is in what time period? Birth to two months, indiscriminate two to seven months, specific attachment, seven to 12 months, and multiple attachments from one year onwards. Quick description of asocial behavior between humans and uh, non-human objects is quite similar. Happier in the presence of humans than when alone. Preference for familiar adults, they smile at everyone. 
indiscriminate attachment states, they recognize and prefer familiar people, preference for people rather than inanimate objects, they accept, however, they accept comfort from any adult and they still don't show separation or stranger anxiety just yet, indicating they haven't necessarily formed an attachment yet. In the specific attachment stage, primary attachment to one particular individual, the person who is most sensitive to their signals, they show stranger anxiety, they show separation anxiety, and they use familiar adults as a secure base. They like to go back to that person to feel more secure. And then from one year onwards, they form secondary attachments with familiar adults with whom they spend time, for example, father, grandparents, etc. Right, here's an application question. AO2 application, applying our knowledge to a scenario, all right? Tom's separation anxiety. John and Melissa live with their son, Tom, and Melissa's mother, who looks after little Tom while John and Melissa both work. Despite the fact that Melissa works, she makes a special effort to sit and play with Tom when she gets home. When Tom got to the age of seven months, he began to get quite upset when his parents left for work. His grandmother tried to distract him and give him lots of attention. Here are the questions. 1. Referring to Schaefer and Emerson's stages of attachment, how would you explain to John and Melissa why Tom's behaviour has changed? And then 2. Extension. Based on Schaefer and Emerson's stages, what could you advise them to expect from Tom's attachment behaviour in the future? Okay, give yourself five minutes, answer those questions, and I'll go through the answers now. Here we go. Explain to John and Melissa why Tom's behavior has changed. You should have got something along the lines of this. Tom's behavior has probably changed because he has entered Schaefer and Emerson's third stage of discriminate attachment. This is exactly what we would expect as Tom is now seven months old. Tom's attachment behavior is now directed towards his mother and he will show distress at separation from her, even when he's being cared for by another familiar adult, in this case, his grandmother, okay? He's entered that third attachment stage, the discriminate attachment where he's formed an attachment and now when his mother leaves, he, so, he is showing separation anxiety. Based on Schaefer's stage of attachment, what could you expect to, what could you advise them to expect from Tom's attachment behavior in the future? According to Schaefer and Emerson, the stage of discriminate attachment is followed quickly by a stage of multiple attachments. As Tom's grandmother is a familiar adult, we would expect that she will become a secondary attachment figure. Therefore, we would not expect Tom's protest to last very long, okay? Key terminology in there, okay? You're using the stage names, you're using multiple attachments, you're using discriminate attachments, secondary attachment figure, primary attachment figure, okay? Right, couple questions, here we go. What stage am I at? Try and work out which of Schaefer's stage of attachment each child is at, and then work out the implications for you as the babysitter for their care, right? So they're gonna talk, they're obviously not, well, they're thinking, it's okay. I am Bobby, I have just started to really be interested in people around me. I don't mind who cuddles me, and I'm not particularly bothered if they come or go. What stage do you reckon that is? That's the indiscriminate attachment stage. An implication, a good time to babysit. At this stage, they enjoy the company of people and may enjoy being picked up and cuddled. Next one, I am Marion and I really do not want mum to leave me at the moment and other people coming just make me cry. What stage do you reckon that's likely to be? The specific attachment stage. This is the baby you hope is in bed when you arrive and does not wake up before mum gets home. They are likely to be very upset if they do wake up and very hard to soothe because they form that primary attachment. Next one. I am Timmy. I like my mum and my dad and my gran and Teddy and my mobile and my blanket. If I am really upset, I like to be with my mum. That's the asocial stage. I know it sounds a little bit like the multiple attachment stage, but you see he likes his teddy and his mobile as well. So those are inanimate objects. So he doesn't really show a preference to animal or inanimate objects. 
the best baby to sit for. Babysitting for this one is money for nothing. As long as they are fed and dry, they will happily gaze at you, a box or teddy. Last one. I am Lucy. I like my mum and dad and have a lovely key worker at nursery who looks after me and we get on great. She is really nice if I'm upset. This is the multiple attachment stage. This one has got used to a number of different people and can form attachments to a number of people. The more you babysit for them, the easier it will become. That was Schaefer's stages of attachment, okay? Identify one thing you learned about Schaefer's stages of attachment. Why do you think learning about this is important? How does this apply in real life? Think about who this information is useful to, okay? Who might you tell this to? How might this help you in real life? And if you have you got any more questions, write them down. There we go. That's learning objective two. Identify and analyze Schaefer's stages of attachment. I'm ticking it off. And now we're going to move on to evaluation. Discuss and evaluate Schaefer's stages of attachment. What are the strengths? What are the limitations of this attachment, of this, of these stages, of this theory? Okay, first of all, there's a limited sample characteristics. The sample size of 60 infants and their carers was good considering the large volume of data that was gathered on each participant. However, the fact that all families involved were from the same district and social class and the same city and over 50 years ago is a limitation. Child rearing practices vary from one culture to another and from one historical period to another. These results do not necessarily generalize well to other social and historical contexts, right? Where were the, all these children from? Ah, they're all from Glasgow. Eh, you can't, you can't, you can't use a sample of only Glaswegians, right? From working class families. You can't generalize that to the rest of the population. Awful. Um, you can't generalize that, right? Maybe the results are only to do with these Glaswegian babies from working class families. Maybe we can't generalize this to middle class families. Maybe we can't generalize this to people outside of Scotland or outside of Glasgow or maybe outside of the time period, okay? Time, these have changed, right? There are historical changes from cultures and historical periods. So, you know, is this, is this information still useful to us? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But that is a limitation of Schaefer's stages of attachment. Invalid data is another potential issue. The data collected by Schaefer and Emerson may be unreliable. This is because it was based on mothers' reports of their own infants. Some mothers might have been less sensitive to their infants' protest and therefore less likely to report them. This would create a systematic bias and would challenge the validity of the data. Okay, there's a social desirability bias. People may have not been honest or maybe they weren't as accurate as they thought they were being. And this challenges the validity of the data found and therefore challenges these sh shapers' stages of attachment which this research was built upon. However, there have been real world applications to this. A practical application of research such as Schaefer and Emerson looking into the importance of attachment resulted in hospitals placing mothers and babies in the same room in the days following birth. The previous practice was to room mothers and child apart. This was altered after understanding the importance of attachment from birth and to encourage the formation of attachments. Previous to this research, Babies and mothers were roomed in different in different rooms in the hospital. You'd have a baby room with all the babies in there, and that's where you would put the baby. You wouldn't put the baby and the mother in the same room, right? But after this research and other research like this, they showed, wow, actually, it's really important that the baby and mother get put together, and they start to form this attachment, okay? So that's why they now put the baby and the mother in the same room at birth. So this is a real world application. This is showing how this has actually altered our understanding of everyday life. Here's the evaluation task. Can you write the evaluative points into a peel paragraph structure? Your evaluative points will be most, um, they'll, be, they'll be of a much higher caliber if you peel them. Points, one strength, one limitation of this research or of this theory is, Evidence, research found, or for example, 
explain this is a strength or this is a limitation because and then link back to the question this shows that okay try and peel your evaluative paragraphs give that a go now please and that was the evaluation so to be able to discuss and evaluate shaper stages of attachment yes we can ticking it off let's move on to the plenary i've got a few multiple choice questions for us give this a go number one in the 1964 study, which of the following best describes the participants? A. 60 18 month, year, 18 month old girls from Glasgow. B. 60 middle class children and fathers from Edinburgh. C. 30 working class boys and their families from Glasgow. And D. 60 working class children and their families from Glasgow. Which one? A, B, C or D? Vote now please. It was D. Well done. Good. Number two, Schaefer and Emerson assessed what in the infants? Stranger anxiety, separation anxiety, separation and stranger anxiety, zombie related anxiety. It was C. Separation and stranger anxiety. Number three, which of these stages does a child first display social behavior towards all adults? A. The asocial stage. B, the indiscriminate attachment stage. C, the specific attachment stage. D, the multiple attachment stage. You think it's C? It'd be wrong. It's B. And number four, at which age do children usually start to form a specific attachment? Around seven months. It's not always that cut and dry, obviously. Some will be a little bit before, some a little bit after, but around seven months. How many did you get out of four? Are you an absolute legend? Right, that was lesson two, Schaefer stages of attachment. Next lesson is lesson three, the role of the father. Well done, my neo psychologist. Good work today. I've been Mr. Neo. God bless and peace. I'm feeling like well, I feel like a prince, I'm feeling myself. I'm loaded with bills, cause I wasn't blessed with no Uncle Phil. Don't know how it feels. I wanted to flex, they told me to chill. I'm making a flip. My life is a flick, now load up the flip. Yeah.